Hello, it's everyone's favorite time again, update time. I have so many great juicy things to tell you guys and I'm actually so excited and happy. The first thing is, yes, I did get a nose job in Turkey and yes, I did pay cash for it. I'm gonna make a whole vlog experience video about that and a whole Q&A, so if you have any questions about that, leave them down below in the comments and that'll be the next video. Ah! Um, also, I am in Eastern Europe, in Bulgaria, in my home country, and I feel so much happier and alive. I wish I could live here full time. I think um, because I like it's better here it's just so Eastern Europe core like I can't explain to you like even going outside to throw away the trash is like a sleigh sleigh I just need to like make some friends here speaking of friends I like met I met someone <laughs> Okay, we'll talk about that later. Um, I'm gonna answer your guys' questions that you left for me and let you know. Someone asked the benefits of living in Europe versus in America. It's a lot less expensive. I was thinking about doing videos where I show you guys people's apartments and their cost of living if that's interesting for you. The food is amazing and I get so scary from like doing nothing here. Um, the people are nice. Uh, the internet connection is such a sleigh. I'm gonna start streaming on Kick and on Twitch. And my family is here, which is arguably the most important part. Some negatives of living in Europe is that it's difficult for me to get my sponsorship packages and do collabs with other like American YouTubers. So it kind of makes me like not as good as my job. Um, and there's fake alcohol at the clubs, which made me really sick the other day. I threw up after a nose job and I was bleeding and I thought I was so cute with my bloody photo. I was like, Blair. Um, and then also it is difficult to find rich husband. I don't know. I showed you guys all my spam account. Um, the the mail I found recently and you guys said I woke up and chose a mafia member so <laughs> um so as you guys know I got a nose job recently and I do all these procedures on myself to feel better and more confident about my body and to like feel happier without makeup and one of the things that I do the most often is do my at home laser I carry my Kenzie IPL handset from country to country for more than a year now because it truly really works and I am about as naked as a mole rat at this point so um this is how it looks it's super sleek ergonomic easy to use you can carry it around it works with adapters and converters it's got this super long cord so you can plug it in. It's really easy to use and I'm sure you've heard me talking about it for years now. They are my favorite sponsor. You guys know I've been using the Kenzie for over a year now because I want to be a naked mole rat. I've been using it on all different parts of my body. My legs are literally hairless at this point. It takes about three weeks to see some kind of results, like your hair growing back slower, it's thinner, it's patchier, you don't have to shave as frequently. You know, sometimes I used to shave in the morning when I took a shower, and by nighttime when I used to go out, I used to be prickly already. I'm so happy that doesn't happen anymore. I've also used the Kenzie on my chin hairs, and although they are stubborn, um, after about 20 weeks, they are almost completely gone, which I love. Like, can you imagine me with a beard? That's how I would look without Kenzie. I would really recommend this to my best friends. I've been carrying it around so they can try it. I've recommended it to my family. I really think that being hairless and smooth and just putting on silky body oil feels so nice and so great so i really appreciate kenzie for sponsoring me if you guys do want to check it out there is a link down in the description box below so basically how you use it is you plug it in plug it in plug it in all you have to do to use it is plug it in, click the button, there will be a green light that lights up and then you just slide it across your body. You can zap individual places or you can do something that's called glide mode so it can do it all in one go. It's a really important thing to remember now that it's summer is to not go in the sand two weeks before and two weeks after, make sure you're not tan. There is a skin color chart on the back that you can check to make sure you can use it like you're pale enough. There is partial results in three weeks and full results in 12 weeks and Kenzie also offers the 90 day money back guarantee so please buy it click the link down in the description box try it see if it's working for you and if it's not return it if it is keep it forever and be hairless like me it works on all parts of your body your arms your underarms your bikini line your chin hairs my favorite part to do it in <laughs> Not only that, Kenzie is now offering payment plans on their website, so if you can't afford it in one go, you can do payment plans or installments. It's a lot easier and convenient for everybody. 
I find all other methods of removing the hair on your body really arduous and expensive and tedious. Like waxing, you have to go to a person unless you want to rip out your uh, hairs. Um, shaving, you, like, you have to buy new razors all the time. And I literally used to get prickly by the time I used to leave the house after I shaved. Epilating hurts so much more than this. Um, this feels like a little bit of heat and a little bit of a prick, but nothing significant. Like I would say the pain is like maybe a one out of 10. So if you haven't tried it yet, please go to kenzzi.com and try it out. There's a link down in the description box as well as an amazing discount code that's on the screen and down in the box, okay? Um, someone asked me hot takes on Americans. I'll give you some. They're not hot takes, but they're like some obvious differences between America and Europe. Americans have ice cubes, okay? Every time I ask for ice cubes here, they give me one or two ice cubes. No, ma'am, I would like a bucket of ice cubes. Number two, air conditioner. Not that popular in Europe. Um, number three, Uber and like driving and parking everywhere. Not that popular. Um, a lot of the times, even to go to the bathroom here, you have to go on like a witch hunt down the stairs, through the corridor, up, down. It's like dark and not well lit. So I feel like if you have mobility problems europe is really difficult the cobblestones are really hard to drag your suitcase and your luggages through um but in general it is a really fun place to be so my only answer to this when people ask where i want to live or where is better is that there is no better they're just different so appreciate what you have and go see it and check it out if you want but also don't feel like you got the worst end of the stick because they're both cool good places to live someone asked tell us about your weirdest night out haha <laughs> i'm sure it'd be fun i'm insane i feel like my life could be a movie at this point i think i could just write a book um the other night i had fake alcohol at a club which i didn't even know was a real thing until like i called some people and they're like yeah it's made with methanol instead of ethanol or something and i was like meth <laughs> but it made me really sick and i was like shocked that that's like even a thing um but the men all over the world are exactly the same especially in like nightclubs and bars you see them with their eyes like they're literal hungry sharks on the prowl um and i don't really know how to flirt in bulgarian but i like saw someone at a club and I was like I just made like eyes at him and gave him a smile and then he like came and like talked to me and I was like wow like it, the men are all the same everywhere <laughs> it's just like funny um yeah if you guys do want like more details about my life it's on my spam account while that spam ham I tend to share on there on live because it's like less people like please talk a little about about what people say when you troll and they think you're serious okay this is actually a really good topic I've been trolling on social media since I started, but lately I've been doing it more and more and people think I've changed or I'm different or I'm unrelatable now or I'm out of touch with reality, but really I have just figured out a strategy and let me explain. So I've basically put up a little bit of a boundary between my real life and who I am as a person and my internet content just because when you have millions of people looking at you and critiquing you and judging you and knowing where you live and who you're with and like what you're doing it's a little bit scary sometimes it's it's scary to get vulnerable and have someone um critique it or make fun of it so what i've been doing lately is trolling um <laughs> and that's when you like make up a story and you put clips together and that's what you have is your content because sometimes a little bit of privacy is good because the world is scary and although you guys have good intentions all it takes is like one weirdo to decide they don't like me and to like burn my house down okay so i have pretty much figured out a way to still make content and still have fun on the internet because i love this as my job and still occasionally get vulnerable and relatable but keep it a little bit further away from me as a person it's like a little shell it's a little boundary just in case you know because i feel like uh people can also get jealous and like send you the evil eye and all this stuff i feel like a lot of the things in my life that happened that you guys think were bad or like that were sad maybe wouldn't have happened if i didn't share so much of the good stuff leading up to it on social media so i'm really careful now um and i like to troll it's just funny i know what gets the views i know how to work the algorithms i'm here for work okay i clock in clock out and someone asked how do you deal with like the hate comments i don't i don't read them anymore um i just don't feel like they're valuable information i love reading messages and dms from you guys where you tell me your feelings or you share something or you ask for advice like that i'll read but reading hate comments is like unnecessary like i for what what is that gonna do what is not gonna help me in any way so i just don't 
how long have you and Mia been friends and how did y'all meet? Okay, this is funny. Everyone thought that Mia and I would fight because we have a similar type of content. We make sugar daddy jokes, we make jokes about men, whatever. And everyone was like pitting us against each other and they thought we had like stolen each other's content or someone was copying. But Mia slid in my DMs and then I ignored her because I'm too good for her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't see it for like three months. But while I was in Miami, I saw it like by some serendipity. Um, and I went to grab lunch or dinner with her. We made a reservation at a nice restaurant. We didn't realize it was a Wednesday. When, and that day the restaurant was not a party. It was a nice family restaurant. So we both came looking like strippers with latex and platform heels to this nice family restaurant. <laughs> And then we became best friends ever since because of course we would and um, I have been friends with her for about a year and a half now We have like a friend anniversary on January 5th And I really respect and appreciate her because Mia's not the kind of person that will just be nice to you to be nice to you She'll literally straight up tell you to your face. She's like Blair you need to stop drinking Blair I understand you're feeling that way about that guy But he's repulsive and disgusting and here are the reasons and this is why you should leave him She's not like blindly supportive you know and i really appreciate that in a friend she's also extremely kind and empathetic so it's really an interesting character that i wish more people had it's and you know what else i'll tell you she's one of the prettiest people i've ever seen in my life and she is never jealous of other pretty people and she only encourages people to also be pretty she shares what plastic surgery and procedure she's had done and she thinks that natural beauty is also pretty um she just thinks if you want enhancements you can get them so i really think that's cool like you think sometimes pretty girls like people say oh you have a resting bitch face or like you look like a bitch that's because they're a little bit like scared of you because they think you'll be mean but that's not really the case people that are actually confident in themselves will never write hate comments and write mean things to other people on the internet or be judgmental so yeah pretty pretty girl slay <laughs> why did you leave miami for utah um okay interesting juicy me and i are doing a podcast together so we are now glued to each other for the next year she has a boyfriend this boyfriend has to work in utah so he got apartment there i'm speaking like i like a child um, me and I have to be together and I don't have a boyfriend so I was just like I'll go wherever you are so we can make content together and that's what we did um, so we're just in Utah now Utah interesting place no other comments <laughs> but my lease in Miami was always up it was always over at this time so it's not like I abandoned anyone or I left anyone this was always the plan from like day one um, and then my old roommate is out doing great things making content doing whatever so yeah um, and then also, I just want to touch on the fact that sometimes when you guys don't see someone in my social media or in my videos, you think we're not friends anymore. But that's not true. Sometimes we're just in like different places, like Sophie's in New York, Monica's in Toronto, but I still love them very much. We're still friends. We still chat all the time. Same thing with Gigi. She's like traveling right now. So even though someone's not in my content every day or regularly, doesn't mean that we had a friendship break or some kind of dramatic thing. It just means like we're not together right now, but we're still friends. <laughs> someone asked for my favorite pieces of clothing or accessories right now i've been wearing this really stylish shirt from bearishka for about two weeks now because i am terrible at packing for some reason last year and the years before when i was in tulum and miami was like really stylish and really had like outfits together and i made a lot of outfit videos but right now i just don't feel like putting effort and spending money on my clothes and my outfits so i've been wearing yoga pants i would really recommend these they're from a brand called pop flex i got in a video that I made a couple months ago. Um, and I love this Bearishka shirt for designer stuff. I love these Christian Dior flip flops. The rubber ones though, not the ones that are super hard. They're amazing to walk in in the summer um, and in, in the winter because I wear the same shoe everywhere. And I would highly recommend Ugg slippers. I love them. The fact that I don't have a sponsorship with them is rude. <laughs> What album slash artist have you been loving lately? One of my goals for this year actually is to become a DJ. I'm not joking. I feel like I would be such a good DJ because my taste in music is and also because I really like to go out and be at a party and I feel like if I was a DJ at the party, A, I would be getting paid, B, I would control the music, C, it would be fun as fuck. So I'm looking for people to teach me how to DJ right now and I feel like it'd be such a like a fun side quest for me. I also really want to learn how to be a pilot. Um, my friend Q actually told me about this jet that has a dual engine that's called like the Red Bull jet or something and it can fly like this way and then it can fly the other way like it can like reverse. That's so cool. So yeah, my new side quests are become a DJ and become a pilot. And I know this is at the dismay of my family who thinks my main side quest should be getting married. <coughs> But for some reason, that is of no interest to me. <laughs> and 
I just think it's funny because Eastern European families, let me know if you guys struggle with this in the comments too, they're like so hung up on, you know, relationships and getting married and for me that's just like, yeah, I don't really care so much, like I don't really care about having kids. Uh, I'm actually terrified of having kids because I'm terrified of being a not good enough mother or traumatizing them in any way or not being like there enough or doing a good enough job. So. And also I'm scared of being pregnant like the whole experience really scares me like I'm growing a human that I don't know that a man put inside me who, who is this <laughs> and then not only after that you have to like breastfeed it so like I feel like my body would then become like a factory for this human of I don't know I just feel really weird about the whole thing I just am really hoping that I don't regret not having kids one day or if like I will have kids, just know I'm fucking scared and don't say a mean thing if I ever come on here and say I'm pregnant because I know what you're thinking. <laughs> but let me know if you're child free by choice or child free because you had to and if you regret it or if you feel sad about it because I want the consensus because everyone with kids is like, they're the greatest thing to ever happen to me. Uh, why? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> but like I don't want to miss out on that kind of love experience also so it's kind of you know I also feel like if I had kids I would have to be a lot more responsible um, right now when I like start a new business or travel or do something with my mini I feel like it's it's my responsibility right so I'm only responsible for myself so if I if I put my bank account down to zero because I started a new business or I ran out of money or I did something I, I can live very frugally in my apartment in Bulgaria and like be fine, right? Like no one's relying on me monthly for like m money. If I had a baby, like I wouldn't be able to make such drastic choices. Like I don't think I could side quest being a DJ. I couldn't side quest being a pilot. I don't even know if I would honestly go get a nose job because it's like I'm putting my life in danger. What if I'm not alive for this baby who needs me, you know? So... I just feel like it would be a really life altering change that I'm not ready for, maybe never ready for, maybe ready for more because I've thought about it probably more than the average person because I see like people get pregnant all the time they're like wow, wow this was easy and fun. I'm like how much money do you need for that? <laughs> like, but anyway, it was really good to catch up with you guys, and I will see you, like, really soon with the vlog. I'm going to start posting weekly again. Sorry I was gone from YouTube. I was working on growing my Instagram. Apparently, I can't do all three things at once, and it's getting really hard. So, I love you guys a lot, and I will see you later. Love you lots. Bye.